Hello, my friends. Good evening, and welcome to another episode of the Residency Match Insiders. Thank you, everyone, for joining and subscribing to the YouTube channel and the Facebook page. So, I wanted to do this initially live, but it wasn't that good to share the screen and you know to really show you what I mean with this video. So I'm just gonna record it on my own, and then if you have any questions, please send a, a message, post something on the website, and I will be back to you. So I'm gonna start with what I promised, and it is on how to find physicians' emails in order to be able to send them a request to do an observership with them. And just keep this in mind, to find an observership is a lot of work, so hopefully, by us figuring out the email address of these physicians, we can, you know, send a hundred of them and hope for five or six responses to, to get you an observership. Uh, I know that more and more places are opening back their doors to, uh, to students again. So hopefully you are able to find one observership that you need this season. Okay, so let's just start with how to figure out physicians emails you how if i were to do this again apply and you know look for an observership i will do it this way now because i know how what is the pattern on how to find an email for a physician <clears throat> so think about this an email has two parts one is the username and the other one is the domain which the domain can end up in dot com if it's a it's a public for profit or private um, organization, or it can end up in .org if it is a non-profit organization. So it is very simple. I like to go to, I like to identify a hospital. Well, I did it this way. I, I will identify a hospital that I, I would like to go to a rotation ship or an observership and go into the website. So for example, this is City of Hope. It's a, it's a local hospital where I live and they have a lot of international students. So how do you find, you get into the website and look for, uh, if there's a residency program, look, look for the residency program. So for healthcare professionals, I believe this will be the way to go. So for healthcare professionals, and look down, see what is in there. So there is um, some graduate medical education, which well, that's where we need to go. So click on clinical residency and fellowships and go down. Oh, there you go. So there is a doctor's name, Laura Crapper. So let's see what Laura is about. So after you open her link, you will find, hello, Laura. Let's see, it's a breast surgery doctor and it doesn't have her email listed. Don't know, keep going down, nothing, nothing. Okay, let's go down. Let's go back to where we were a minute ago. Okay, here, clinical health psychology, PhD. How about this one? Oncology fellowship. Program director, Lily Lay. Dr. Lay. Okay, Dr. Lay, surgical oncologist and Oh, so we found her email, but this is just the beginning. If you're lucky to find an email with a simple search, that's great. You could email Dr. Lay and ask, hey, what about a, a little observership for a couple of weeks? And hopefully she will reply to you. She looks nice. So, but most importantly, look, this is the way we're going to figure out other emails because remember, we're going to send a hundred emails. So the username is L Lay which is, stands for the initial of Lily and Lay, her whole last name, Lay, at coh.org, which stands for cityofhope.org because it's a non-profit organization. So to make it easy for you guys, so I can explain you that again. So the capital letter of the name, let's say we find another doctor at City of Hope, Let's say this is Dr. Daniel David. So the capital, the initial capital, um, the initial letter of the first name, D, and the whole last name, David, at 
coh.org. So now we know the structure of the email. Let's go back to, to see the hope. Now we found what we needed here. So now we go back to the main website. And in the main website, now we look for uh, find a doctor. Find a doctor. Okay. And here we're going to look for a, a quick search of what doctors is, are in the area. So we're going to look for family medicine. I don't know if Cedar Hope has family medicine, but we'll try. Okay, so family medicine, Dr. Patel. So her email will be ppatel at coh.org. Let's see if it opens her email too. Sometimes you're lucky and the website will show the email, but nope, it doesn't show her email. But her email is that one, 100%. And Stephanie Mooney, so it will be a S Mooney at cth.coh.org. Um, palliative medicine is a great area where you should do a rotation. That's one of those things that um, pr um, program directors are, are looking for a, a, a student, a, an applicant, or a resident that is uh, well versed on palliative care medicine. Okay, so we did Seed of Hope. Now let's try let's try Mount Sinai. So I opened the Mount Sinai Medical Center website. This is in Florida. As a, again, you have to research the whole website, but the idea is the same. You find the pattern, and that's how the last name and the um, and the name will show on the email. Okay, so I already researched this website, so I went to medical education. And in medical education, I found all the, the uh, residency programs they have. So I chose internal medicine. And start reading. Oh, this is about this. This is the the nice program director. And I go to applicant information. Why? Because there is where you you will see information about the secretaries, the uh, the point of contacts. So keep looking down. Keep looking down. Oh, here there's an email. So Carlene Barudi is the um, coordinator. So her email is there. And now you can see again the pattern, the um, the structure of the email. You have the domain, which is at msmc.com, and you have the username, which has, in this case, the whole first name, a dot in between, and the last name, the whole last name. So Carlene Barudi, carlene.barudi at msmc.com is the way her, the, um, they have designed their emails. Now we have the structure in mind. Now we go again back to home and we look for find a doctor. Let's see. Patient resources. Where are the doctors here? Uh, oh, our doctors. Okay, some of the doctors are here. So let's see. We would like to do a rotation with Adam. Curtis, uh, Nadir, it's too complicated to find his email because he has three names, but let's, what about Raymond Rodriguez? So under the structure that we saw on the email for the coordinator, Raymond Rodriguez email will be raymond.rodriguez at msmc.com. Of course, it doesn't show up here, but that's her, his email. And so now you have the email, the same with all the other physicians. It is uh, hit and miss, but it is the best we can do. And hopefully that's the way to find our rotations. Okay, so this was in another program that had a residency in-house. Okay, so let's see. Maybe this is this is another hospital, Metro West Medical Center. This doesn't have uh, this. I'm not looking now to, um, let's say this hospital doesn't have a, a residency program. Let's look into all the website because it's the same idea. In this website, I went to events and start looking. Oh, there's an event here. Hmm. I wonder if I would find some information there. So I open this and start looking into this. Of course, there's someone here that will answer your questions. So joanne.prentice at mwmc.com. So we have the pattern, again, is the, um, this is a very common pattern. 
uh, Joanne dot Prentice, so full first name and full last name separated by a little dot and the initials of the hospital dot com. So we have username and uh, we have the uh, domain. So again, we go to find a doctor and this hospital is in Massachusetts. So what are we looking for? We're looking for, I don't know, primary care. And we're looking at uh, Massachusetts. Okay. So showing three doctors. It will show you Polina Pascaliva, a DO, and Asima Kayum, MD. So under the same idea, the email for Dr. Pascaliva will be polina.pascaliva at mwmc.com. So there you go. That's the easiest way to find emails, um, figure out the emails for the physicians you you would like to do rotations. I will just send a hundred of them. Okay, so that was looking into a hospital. Now, very uh, common, commonly used websites in the United States are Toximity and LinkedIn. These are uh, websites that physicians use um, a lot to network, to connect with other physicians in the area. And so if you get to, to start a Doximity account in the search area, you can type family physicians in Pasadena. Okay, let's see what comes out in this search. So as for people, I have all these doctors. Victor Castilla, okay, let's open Dr. Castilla website. Uh, oh, it has an email, victormedicina at gmail.com. Send him an email, hey, would you like me to, could, could I do a, an observership with you? Um, hopefully he's cool and he will say, hey, sure, come over and let's rotate here for four weeks. All right, same for Raymond Goy. Let's see, he doesn't have his email here, but if he doesn't have his email posted, you can send a message. And uh, Dear Dr. Goy, will you take me for an observership? Please, pretty please. Maybe he will text back. And hundreds of them. Okay, so that's proximity. Now LinkedIn. LinkedIn, it's another very popular um, website for physicians here. So it looks like this, you just create an account and same, uh, start a, res uh, a search here, MD in Massachusetts. Okay, let's see, MD in Massachusetts. So it gives you a whole list. Uh, you, you, you can request a connection, but you can also just go into the website and look at his, uh, where is he working, where is he practicing, and to connect in LinkedIn, to, to be able to send a message, you have to connect first. So this guy has uh, his message uh, center block, but it is what it is. So connect first, if he accepts the message. And let's see if it's always the, uh, the same. Helen Shang, let's see. Helen Shang, can I message you? No. Okay, so you have to connect first. And, but it seems like there's other, um, other doctors here that are closer to you for some reason they are within your um, within your network so you are able to message without connecting so for example there's an MD candidate at Harvard School Ned Lu let's see if I can message him it's taking a while let's see Dr. Danani taking a while uh, what about Alex Mendez? Oh, this guy. Okay, so it opens. I don't have to connect. All right, so that is the most common ways to connect with a physician in the United States. There you go. And coming next is like a lot because they support the IMG graduates so look into this if you can one is the um, 
the UCLA IMG program. And what this program is about, it's um, so basically, if you want to go straight to the point, you sign up, they help you pass, they help you with um, education to, to pass the steps that you have pending. But most important, you sign a contract that by being part of the program, you will be likely placed in a family practice residency program that is affiliated to the program. So you will complete the program and your commitment is to work three years in an underserved rural area. Um, three years go by fast. I have a couple of friends that did this and they finish residency, they work on an underserved area and then they start practicing on their own. So it is worth the take a shot on this. It's only for family medicine and it has a couple of requirements. The most important one is to speak Spanish and to um, I remember, ah, oh, you have to have a green card or citizenship. Okay, so that's one, the UCLA IMG program. Very popular in California. Take a look on this. Okay, and the next one is the this program by the University of Minnesota, which is the, um, the bridge program, the IMG program bridge. So basically it's a nine month program. You learn something there. You, uh, you, you get into uh, make, to make some contacts, networking, and hopefully you get into residency. I don't have much information about this one, but uh, I heard good things. Um, and while navigating this website, I found that they also have some, some free, um, free educational uh, packages. And one that I would like you to, to take a look in, on is the end of life and advanced care planning. Why? Because as I said before, it's one of these important topics and you will get a little certificate that will look good in your CV. All right, next one. I not much. I don't know much about the the opportunities there, but um, uh, remember, we are um, uh, a community of students that are called the minorities. We are a minority. We're immigrants, uh, under underrepresented, and so. There is a lot of help for, for these kind of students or, or applicants in the United States. You have to look into the places. Usually uh, these are for American students, but it's worth taking a shot and sending an email to one of these centers and say, hey, uh, I know this is for American students, but by chance is there a, an opening for, for a foreign visitor just for an observership? And who knows, maybe you hit some some good spot there and get into a little observership. You know, there is um, any effort is worth trying. So take a look into this and if you find something that um, may, may catch your attention, please apply these opportunities for research and for visiting rotations. Okay, next coming is looking into medical missions in your own country. Why? Because every year there is medical missions going into every third world country in the world. And I know this because every time I go to visit Peru, I find a medical mission, I make friends there, and it's a great opportunity for uh, medical students from that country to volunteer as translators because medical jargon it's very difficult to, to catch from, from a different population. So if you go there and you serve them as a, as a translator, they might like you and you may be able to ask for, for an observership. Who knows, you may know someone that is already connected to a residency program. So look for medical missions, for example, Peru. Um, let's see, and there's a couple, medical missions to Peru, Christian life movement. Let's look into this one. And then the dear volunteers, several weeks, COVID, Sylvia Ortiz, there's some emails here. I will send her an email, say, hey, is there any medical mission coming to Peru? I'm here, I'm willing to help as a translator. Uh, I'm a medical student and I'm applying for um, training in the United States. This experience will serve me greatly on advancing into my purposes. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining. And I hope this little information was useful for you and helped you 
to try to get in these observer shapes. Any, um, I want to finish saying that any clinical experience is important. So you don't get your hands into um, a direct clinical observership inside a hospital or an outpatient practice with a doctor. Maybe you should look into shadowing a social worker, a palliative care specialist, a chaplain, a um, public health doctor. Why? Because any clinical experience is worth being there. Why? Um, for primary specialties, like the ones that IMG usually apply to, public health is a great thing for you to know what is killing people around the area, how, was, how has COVID impacted a certain specific area that is big on uh, uh, Hispanic population, um, getting to know what are the steps to to help a patient on hospice with uh, uh, an observership in palliative care medicine, or getting to know more about hospice care, or getting to know more about chronic conditions. Any observership is worth at this point in time. It will look great in your uh, CV and it will help your application. So if you find this, if you found this video useful for your purposes, please, um, I don't know, send me a text or uh, follow me on, on YouTube. Uh, I guess this is the that's the only way for me to, to know that you guys are liking the videos and um, motivates me to do more. Uh, I hope I'm bringing um, information that is useful. I'm not trying to sell anything, not not, not yet, but uh, I'm not trying to sell anything. Uh, to be honest, I'm just trying to to give you information that's useful. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you can, and tell your friends about the website. Bye.